Hey everybody, it's Peter and this one is super exciting. As you know, this channel has been automotive focused and power sport focused and I did throw in my own personal A-liner trailer which in about two weeks has 70 some odd thousand views. Good news is we're gonna to continue to look at the small trailer market and I'm here at RV World in Fredericton, New Brunswick, just off the Trans-Canada Highway and these guys are awesome. They're giving me complete access to their entire vehicle lineup. So if you wanna know more about this vehicle or this trailer or even the other floor plans or even anything that they have in stock, let me know in the comments below and make sure you subscribe, give this video a like, let them know that you want me doing videos for them and we'll be able to have all kinds of information here. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna cover this thing in detail and I think I'm gonna hit on a lot of things that the other videos aren't showing you. As I said, I'm a fan of this thing. I think it's super cool. For some people, it's gonna be perfect. For other people, it's not gonna be right. And I'm gonna help you try to decide which one of those camps you might fall into. And I think, like I said, I'm gonna show you some things that maybe don't show up in the spec sheet, but I, they will show up in this video to help you kind of decide, you know, is this what's something that's gonna be really enjoyable to you or is it not? So I'm super excited for you uh, to show this to you. This is the Clipper. This is uh, a version of the Clipper. There's lots of things. We're gonna talk about the name and how to break it down in a second when we go around to the back. But this thing's super cool. Essentially, it's a hard side trailer with a pop-up thing. The design of this is really unique and it's designed to have form follow function. It's got a lot of things in it that, you know, although it looks weird and different, it really does add function. And to me, that makes your camping trip better. So, super looking forward to this. Let's get going with this review. All right, it seems kind of cheesy, but the very first thing I want to show you is just the name. This is the Coachman Clipper Express 12.0 TDXL. Now that's important because on video, a lot of times these look the same. There are a lot of different sizes, physical sizes to these units. So you wanna make sure that you're looking at the one that you want. This one here weighs under 2,300 pounds as equipped, this exact trailer. Uh, I'm not sure what the spec sheet says, but that's what this one weighs. And it sleeps four, it's pretty cool. I mentioned RV World in the past, rvworld.ca. Of course, the link is in my description. Let's get going with the full review of this thing. So in the form follows function category, let's talk about what this is. Let's talk about how it matters. First of all, the 12.0 indicates this is about a 12 foot box. Most RVs, when they have a number like that in there, they usually refer to the box of the unit. So around here to the end is gonna be around 12 feet. We can check the exact spec sheet to see the exact length. There of course is the tongue length in front of that. Now, a lot of the Clipper lineup is a pop-up trailer. I used to have a Clipper pop-up trailer that is a traditional trailer like the one you're seeing on screen right now. They still sell those, but this offers you something different. Obviously, you've got this teardroppy shape, which is a popular shape. People like them because they look cool, but they actually are also more aerodynamic. And the reason you would want a trailer like this is to get away from those larger box trailers that frankly have too much frontal area to give you great fuel efficiency, but they also, you know, are just a different kind of style. They're more RVing. This, in my mind, is much more of a camping trailer. And if you've ever tent camped in the past and you're kind of ready to move to a trailer, or if you've RV camped and you're ready to go back to the simplicity of camping, this gives you a lot of the benefits of an RV while also giving you that you know, flexibility to go on those tenting sites to get the scenic spot. So first of all, let's talk about what we've got teardrop shape with a pop-up area. That obviously adds uh, space inside. We're gonna talk about that in a second. The big thing you're gonna notice here is big fat tires here. Now this is partly a styling thing. Part of it looks super cool. People like that. In the small trailer, the teardrop market, there are custom tra uh, trailer makers that tend to have crazy heavy duty. You can tell this behind your Jeep Wrangler Rubicon and go fully off-road. They have pintle style hitches. They're pretty cool. So part of this is style, but part of it is function. So these don't have the off-road suspension that you could go climb the Rubicon trail on, but they do have a suspension with extra ground clearance, with a little extra toughness in it. And again, a lot more sidewall, a lot more wheel. So while it also, while it looks cool, it also allows you to get to the types of places that, let's face it, even modern campgrounds are better equipped to have this for. So you can handle potholes, but the big thing I like about the extra ground clearance this gives you is when you park in those tenting type sites now, you have the clearance around your unit to have the undulations and rocks and all kinds of things. You can really park this in a spot that you can get towards that scenic spot by the lake or something like that. So that extra ground clearance really does help, with, in my mind, with finding that really cool spot. You can park it anywhere. And that's part of the joy of having something like this. With it being only about 12 feet long, sleeps 
four inside, you have the ability to drive easily, park easily, go down those potholed roads and not worry if your trailer's gonna fall apart, but also be able to park it closer to cool spots, which is the whole idea and the whole reason you got into camping in the first place. So there is function here. Hard side versus tent, we're gonna talk about that as well right now. Okay, so other than aerodynamics, which of course the teardrop shape does help with, why would you go with a sort of semi-soft top instead of a regular uh, tent trailer uh, like this. So of course the tent trailer has less frontal area again and really it's going to have more space inside with the bunks on each end. If you want ultimate efficiency with uh, driving, a tent trailer is going to be probably a little bit better. What this does is allows you to have a space that is super easy to pack. If you've ever packed up a tent trailer, you know at the dealership they tend to pack them up and show you how easy that is and it's not really hard to pack up a tent trailer. What's hard about having a tent trailer is all the stuff that you have has to be put away in the right sort of folded up spot in the you know to allow the trailer to collapse and allow your vehicle to fit what it needs to fit in there. What's cool about hard sided trailers is you can just leave stuff on your bed. You can just leave the bedding out. You can leave you know extra things, extra you know whatever you want in a hard sided trailer. And you don't really have to pack up. So if you're into traveling instead of just going somewhere and parking for two weeks, a hard side trailer gives you that space to just leave stuff out, not to have to pack up perfectly when you travel from campsite to campsite. That means you can travel earlier in the morning, get out on the road earlier. You can drive until later at night or if you don't want to do either of those, you just have more time camping. And that's one thing I really like. So this is going to be necessary to give you full headroom inside. Now, the cool thing is if it is a cool night, you can close this down while you're sleeping for the most part, depending on some of the bed configurations. And that allows you to still run your AC or your heat, but have a little bit smaller area and a little bit better insulated area. So I like to go fall camping and this is the kind of thing that can really extend your season. Uh, you could close it down on those cool nights, have that heat going and stay warmer than letting this tent vent some heat out. Now the tent will hold some heat. So we'll talk about that in a second. So what I wanna do now is I know you wanna see the interior. What I wanna do is Everybody goes around the outside first and I do want to show you the outside because there are some things in this unit that are unique and I think they add some value including something like this right here. But I want to go around the outside first and then we'll get to the interior and we'll really go in depth there in there as well. All right, so let's start with the outside here. First thing I want to point out is yes, it does have an air conditioner on the roof. You're going to have different styles of air conditioner on this unit. So this one is the traditional RV style air conditioner, and that means you're going to be plugged into at least 30 amp service. There are other units like that one over there that has a regular residential, kind of like the window style air conditioner, which means you can plug it into just a 110 and have air conditioning in there, which is kind of cool. All right, down here, there's some storage space. We're going to talk about that in a second, but one thing that you may not notice, if I don't point it out, is there's a big roof rack up here. Now, I'm a huge fan of having those roof racks because you can take your extra stuff up there, but you can also take things like kayaks on either side of this air conditioner up there. And of course, you'd have to take them down before you put the roof up. But what that means is you have a place to take your kayaks on vacation without having to leave them on your car. And if you're like me, you like to bring the kayaks on vacation or something like that, or even just, you know, regular extra gear, you have a roof rack where you have the option of taking some of that stuff. Stuff. You can take things like kayaks and you can leave them here, which means when you do your run around town, you're not taking your, you know, kayaks down to parking garages in cities or going down to, you know, all the places you might go when you're on vacation, down all the hikes. You can leave them here with your trailer if you want. You can even leave them up high up on the thing. So you do have a roof rack up there. It's worth pointing out. Propane tank, that's typical stuff. You've got the battery spot right there. We don't have a battery on this one right now. That's fine. There is some storage in here. It goes all the way through. There's a lot more storage inside. So we'll just quickly show you what that looks like here. Nice big storage all the way across the unit. And the door is almost as big as the storage area, which means you can get everything you need in and out of there. Uh, little things like taking a regular camp room or a big, huge camp mat out. Uh, all that stuff is gonna easily fit in there. Uh, so good size uh, storage for the outdoor type storage right there. The tires, let's just show you them. They do have a ton of tread which I guess in a muddy situation can keep it from sort of sliding off the road. Again, some of that might be for style for you. Some of that might be for function. This is pretty cool. This is an outdoor kind of grill, griddle type thing. Uh, it's all right here. So of course, you've got the ability to cook outside and you can hook up to your uh, propane tank with a quick connect right there. And this can sit outside, which is super convenient because it's nice to cook some of this stuff outside if you want, but you don't have to cook outside. You can also cook inside. And that's one difference between this style of teardrop trailer and a regular teardrop trailer. You have the option to cook inside. So when you're plugged in, 
You can plug in extra things down here. You've got your regular plug right there. You've got uh, some extra pieces there. This is one thing I really like that Coachman does. This is such a simple little thing and it is called a pet friendly accessory. As we know, when you go camping, your dog has to be on a leash. If you wanna just leash him up to right there, that's what it's designed for. So you're not gonna scratch up the trailer or do anything else. Other little things worth warning, noting, there's a two-step design here. Some modern trailers have a fold-down step that comes out of the trailer. On something that, like this that you're going to park in more awkward positions, I like that it has no connection with the ground. That means that if it's an uneven ground, you've got the ability to just sort of have that... Um, you know, come off the trailer and not have to connect to the ground, which means, you know, some of those ones that connect to the ground, it has to be kind of be perfectly down to be level for the door to shut. I should point out as well, the door is actually a different style door. So this is your screen door. We can slide that down, get the whole thing screened if we wanted to. Uh, you do have lots of windows on the inside. We'll talk about that. But there's also a little door over here that I've just moved off the video for right now. That is your closed travel door. So you have a hard door when this thing travels, which of course you can picture it folded down and just the hard door traveling, or you've got the full size screen door, super, super simple. Other little things, having a little beverage at camp, looking for the bottle opener right there. That's where we're gonna have it. Uh, of course, that has a fold down handle as well. There is an extended retract, which means that you can power open and close this larger unit's uh, tent top. So that's what this pole does. It's very easy to do. Um, the smaller units don't have that, but this one does, which is pretty cool. I like that. Over here, typical RV stuff. So you do have an outside shower. So if you're looking for a shower in this unit, not a problem. You have one right there. Uh, you have water connections. You have uh, furnace connections there. Uh, plug there as well. You have your fridge over here. And then you have little things. There is a solar panel on the roof, but you can also have a solar attachment right there. You've got all your fresh water and other uh, type of water connections there. And again, here is that extra little uh, hatch that goes through the front again. So we've covered the outside. Those of you looking to see some of the weight on this one, I did mention it's under 2,200 pounds on this exact unit. So there you go, 2,254, pretty cool uh, dry weight for this. Uh, and again, easily towable by a lot of vehicles. All right, now what we're gonna do is go inside. All right, filming the inside of a small trailer is difficult. So we're gonna use some wide angle shots. I'm just filming here with an iPhone, so it's, uh, it is what it is. It's not gonna be super crazy, but I mentioned this sleeps four. So let's go fully wide angle here. It's gonna skew the view a little bit, but it's closer to the way I can see this trailer. So what you have here is a proper sort of queen size bed, and you do have a shelf in front of you right there. You also have a little bit of storage in there. I've got one of the storage doors open right now, just so you can sort of see that space in there. And then you've got another one closed. So as I climb in here, uh, we're going to show you what it looks like with me in here in a second. You've got some storage up top. You've got some storage down there. You could put a TV in there if you wanted to. And if you did put a TV in there, you could drop the TV outside when you want to. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this. I think a camping trailer should be a camping trailer. An RV should be an RV. But if you're used to RVing and you want to drop your, your TV outside, you can get an attachment mount that mounts it up here as well. And um, that's just, you know, the ability to take your TV outside if you wanted to. Now, we mentioned solar here. So we've got solar down there. This little... Uh, area down here, if we open it up here, is another large indoor sort of storage area. So on the left side over here, you do have a um, sort of your, your utilities essentially, right? You have uh, things like your water heater probably in there, uh, maybe your furnace and stuff. Actually, the furnace is over here. So you will have some space there that's used for those kind of things. But over here, you have a wide open indoor storage space. So, oh, there's a propane tank right in there for you. So you can see sort of the size there. That's the 20 pound propane tank right there. No problem. Again, I am wide angle, so everything's kind of skewed a little bit. So typical of this kind of trailer is to have a bed there. What's not typical is what you see right here. Now we've got the window open here. This is a big, fairly wide single bed that comes up and it can fold up like it is, or it can fold down. We're gonna fold it down for you later in the video. And then underneath that is a couch, but this couch can fold out. See all that whole backrest? That can sort of come out and this whole thing slides out and that can be a bed. So it's not quite a double bed, but you could certainly fit, you know, they might claim this sleeps five with it. Uh, certainly two people cozy on there, not a problem. One person, larger person, or person that wants a lot more room, not a problem there. So you have the ability to sleep your family in here, but you can also sort of pack it up a little bit, uh, fold this down, and create a real good eating area in here, which is helpful as well. So if you wanna cook inside, a modern teardrop trailer, doesn't often let you cook inside. They make you cook outside, but you've got your sink in here. You've got your stove in here. You've got a little bit of a fridge in here as well. It's not massive. Typically, if you're gonna go with four people, you're going to need to bring a cooler as well, but you do have this option there for your fridge. And then pretty good storage overall here. So good storage there, good storage everywhere else. So what do you do about a toilet? Well, what I would recommend is getting a little Thetford um, uh, you know, cassette toilet if you wanted to. 
And then although it's more of a public type thing, you have the option of just storing that probably in a hatch like that, uh, it would fit as well. There's more storage underneath here. So that's an important storage area here. Let's just take a look at it for a quick second. As you take a look in here, you can see the wheel well is in there, but this is a storage area that is really necessary because the way I would live in this coach is when you have people sleeping in this area, um, then the beds are down. But once you put their stuff away, you're gonna wanna put their sleeping bags and their other stuff away, and that all should fit easily underneath there with all of their clothes, which means that you have an open space to both eat in here, to live in here if it's pouring rain, but uh, more importantly, just to have the space you need um, when these beds are up. So I'm gonna put these beds back down, we're gonna come back, and I'm also gonna show you headroom in here. So just give me one second as we do that. Magic of editing, it'll be instant for you. All right, the one problem with filming RVs in a hot summer day is you get a little sweaty compared to power sports. All right, so what I wanna do is I'm standing up here and you can kind of see where I am. So I'm about six feet tall, about six feet certainly with shoes on. Near the back of the trailer, obviously I can stand up. As I'm walking forward, you can kind of see the reference point behind me. Here is where I start to hit my head at six feet tall. So down here, if you're an average height person, you can get right to the front here. And if you were in the bed, if I'm sitting on the bed, I've still got a ton of space to sit up here. So when I talk about storage space up here and being able to leave your stuff right here, you absolutely can do that. Now let's swing over, oops, wrong way. Let's swing over, over this way and look at when that upper bunk is gone. So when that upper bunk is gone, you have a bit of a backrest there, sort of like this. You can put this there. When it's up, there's a panel back here which allows you to get a nice comfortable angle. But you can see here, there's actually quite a bit of space and this can be moved in or out. I have it out a little bit just for my own comfort right now, but it is very, very spacious in here for a small unit. Let's not kid ourselves, it's not a massive unit, but you can easily fit people to eat here. There is a table, let's show you the table right now. I have it outside, but you could bring it inside as well. So here's the indoor outdoor table. Now, of course you can see by the design of this, it folds up nice and small so you can pack it away. Uh, I think we had it underneath the bed or maybe we had it in front here. I'm not sure where we had it earlier. I think it was in the front hatch, but the point is it can be stored away in your hatches when it's not in use. Now let's be really honest. This is not a massive table for four people. If you sleep four people in here, you may not be eating four people inside. You may want a screen tent around your uh, uh, picnic table to feed, to feed four people outside. But the point is, you could squeeze two to three people on this quite easily if someone's standing or sitting on the bed, and that's the other option is you can have someone sitting on the bed and sitting on the benches here, and you could easily feed three people. You could squeeze it into four, but you can also take a table like this outside. It's not something that sort of folds up from the inside, so you can use it as you're cooking in here. You can use it when you're washing dishes uh, in addition to maybe your campsite might have a, uh, a picnic table or something like that. So you've really got options with this table, and let's just take a look inside again. We're gonna go wide angle as we jump in here like this and you can see again this is out I can move it in or out and without that upper area you have a lot of space to you know sort of look out right here and have some space there is on the back wall a window here as well and what you can do is you can collapse this down when you're sitting here in bed and I'll try to give you that angle here when we come all the way into the bed so when you're in here if it's hot or cold out, you've got your air conditioning there. You can also put heater in here. One of the things I like to do, if you're gonna be an electric site anyways, electricity is free at that point. You've already paid for electricity, so get an electric heater in here. But if you don't have that, you can use a propane heater as well. But if you close that roof down, what you end up with is the ability to have a fully hard-sided trailer that allows you to just heat what you need. It makes it super, super efficient and it really extends the season out into a uh, cold uh, weather season. So you can camp earlier and camp later with this. The other thing worth pointing out, uh, you do have some uh, uh, lights in there. You have the furnace switch there. There's uh, lots of plugs in here. So plug there, plug over here. There's more plugs out the front. I believe there's USB ports in this somewhere, although I forgot where they are. There's another plug right there. So lots of ability to power your uh, devices right here as well. A pretty cool unit. Let's wrap it up by talking about who I think this unit is best suited for. So talking about who this unit is for, I think it's almost ahead of its time or it's kind of the crest of a new wave in RVs. First of all, yes, these wheels could be viewed as just for style, but if you are someone like myself, up until about a week ago, I had a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, and this thing looks awesome behind a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. The Jeep uh, Wranglers, the unlimited models, the four-door models essentially, they can tow 3,500 pounds. Now, I'm not one to max out a tow rating. Something like this, I had the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 4xe, it's partially electric, and it could tow this weight 
even purely on electric, even up to almost highway speed. So it's so lightweight and it tucks in behind the vehicle that this gets you great mileage, allows you to drive easily, park easily. And that's the thing, some of these bigger units there's a stress to driving the bigger units. There's no real stress to driving this. Now, it's not something that's going to go fully off-road like you see on these custom manufacturers with really crazy off-road suspension on their trailers. This is something that can handle the bumps and bruises. It can give you the extra ground clearance to go through. So if you're going to regular campgrounds but want to go to those tenting type sites, this is going to be perfect. Then you don't need a Jeep Wrangler to tow this. Any pickup truck, any uh, small, you know, medium-sized SUV. The benefit of this is even though your SUV may not be as off-roady as this, having that extra ground clearance allows you to back that thing into that site that gives you the scenic views. And because it's so small, you can kind of maneuver it around a little bit more. You can kind of turn the angles and get it right out the way you want to on that scenic shot. So for me, the off-roady this might be style for you, it might be function for you, but the practicality of having that ground clearance is super helpful, and it's also built a little bit tougher than some of the older typical pop-up trailers, which gives you some strength. I think there's a trend in the RV industry to move smaller, to move from RVs to campers, and this one's gonna hit that. Now, that doesn't mean that RVs are going anywhere. There's lots of people that are still gonna buy RVs. There's lots of trucks to tow those bigger ones, but if you've moved to a slightly smaller vehicle, something that maybe used to be able to tow 5,000 pounds that now is housed 3,500 pounds. This allows you to have that camping experience while still not losing any of the RV conveniences. And that I think is a huge, huge trend that we're gonna start to see. So this one, again, hard side convenience, ability to just throw everything inside. When you camp with something like this, you're basically loading your food, loading your clothes, and you're good to go. You're gonna leave your dishes in here just the same as you would with a typical RV. When you're camping, it's the tents and the sleeping mattresses and this and that and all kinds of things. Load your pillows, load your food, load your uh, clothes, and you're good to go. You can just sit there on a Friday afternoon at three o'clock and call whoever's going camping with you and go, hey, in two hours I'm leaving to go camping and an hour of that is just your commute home. You can have this thing loaded up and ready to go. And that I think is what makes this thing super, super practical. But this isn't the only model. There's other floor models or other floor plans that I wanna show you. So do me a favor, hit subscribe. Let me know you're interested in these kinds of videos and I will come back here to RV World. It's rvworld.ca here in Fredericton, New Brunswick. They are giving me complete access to their entire vehicle lineup. And if I don't know something, cause these are a little bit new to me, their staff is amazing. They're gonna help me make sure that I know what I need to know to make sure that you get what you need to know. And if you have questions, even about this unit, this isn't the only video I'm gonna do on this. If you have questions, I'm gonna do my best to answer your questions in the comments, but I'm also gonna take that comment section and turn it into more videos to make sure that this is the one place you can go to to get all the information you would need on this trailer. And I wanna thank RV World. There's a link in the description of this video to link to their uh, dealership. They're, like I said, just off the Trans Canada. So whether you're just passing through or whether you're in the Maritimes looking for a unit, these guys are awesome. And like I said, I wanna thank them for giving me complete access. Let me know what you wanna know about this. Let me know what you think about it. And uh, like I said, those questions are gonna be future videos soon. So make sure you subscribe and we'll talk to you in the next one.